Right, uh, so my name is Susanna Hardy. I'm Chief Content Officer at IBT Online. I'm delighted to be here today uh, to, to, to share some experiences and expertise that we have in the online world and uh, with websites and online marketing. Delighted to be joined by Aaron Smith, the Program Manager of the CBDC, particularly the Nova Scotia Association of CBDCs, and is a tremendous resource for Atlantic Canadian companies uh, for um, assistance and for all the programs that are available. Um, uh, just a quick word then also about who we are as a company. Um, IBC Online is a, uh, it's actually a U.S. company, but we're delighted to, uh, and proud to be working with Atlantic Canadian companies and the provinces uh, to bring some online knowledge and um, uh, resources uh, to, to Atlantic Canadian companies. Um, basically what we do is we specialize in small mid-cap companies uh, and enabling them to have online business development tools, that means websites and online marketing, in order to go global, to have international websites. Uh, today's agenda, uh, just briefly, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna circle back to, to Erin, and she's gonna look at sort of the, what we call a helping hand for Atlantic Canadian companies. And then I'm gonna take over and talk more about Europe Online, the environment there. Uh, the three largest European, and a little bit of a focus on the three largest European markets. And then I'm going to give some examples of good uh, European websites, European um, uh, online marketing, what the, the key, you know, the essential things you, you know, the must haves uh, for that, and then uh, circle back with some best practices and next steps from the QA, um, if there are any. So that's the agenda for the day. And I'd like to just um, uh, start off with talking a bit about. Atlantic Canada and uh, what we've called a helping hand for Atlantic Canadian companies. And there are a lot of resources that uh, that you can that you can have. There's 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 you know there's there's for example on, on our side we have um, a dedicated web page just for uh, Atlantic Canada companies on our website. And this really groups together the the, the provinces from Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, PEI, Newfoundland, Labrador. Um, uh, but but also the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency uh, working together to give you resources for for, for, for helping you um, uh, to go online. And part of that, I think, is, as I said, we have a dedicated web, uh, website uh, area for you with all the resources that you can download for free. And part of those resources are these webinars that we're putting on. They're in total of nine webinars today online in Europe. We had online marketing yesterday, uh, Tuesday. We had e-commerce, um, online Latin America. Um, uh, next week, we're doing online in the USA. These can be listened to at any time. Uh, just you know, check out the recording of them and we can, you, can, you can listen to them, share them with colleagues. Um, reach out to us directly if you, have, if you have questions that are specific to that. Now I'd like to also hand over briefly to Aaron to talk a little bit about the CBDCs and um, uh, uh, what 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 um what they have available for you, Aaron? Thanks so much, Susanna. So thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm Aaron Smith, I'm the executive director of the Nova Scotia Association of CBDCs, or the delivery agent for this project that's hosting the webinars. And the funding support for this project is made possible through the Atlantic Trade and Investment and Growth Agreement. So this is a partnership of ACOA federally and the four Atlantic provincial governments. Governments made it a priority to help companies get access to the help that they need to export in today's environment. And digital tools and online selling are really a, a great way to be uh, exporting, especially during the pandemic. Um, we've got some additional programs and supports. Um, different governments have different programs that you might be able to take advantage of. And I really would encourage you to reach out and have a chat with your local government folks. Um, we'll have a slide at the end that will give you their contact information or you can reach out to me and I will make that introduction and connect you to the right, right person to be talking to. Let's dive into Europe. Erin, thank you very much. Uh, right, we're going to talk about online in Europe. And first, I wanted just to give a sort of um, a big picture view of, of the, the online world in Europe. Um, you know, how many people does that mean and that we're looking at? Uh, what's the inter internet penetration rate and so on? And um, as you see on this slide, um, this, this statistic takes more than just the EU, this counting 850 million that includes a lot of countries like Turkey and things like that. Um, but, but there's a couple of things I wanted to point out with that. 
first of all, you'll see that the mobile phone connections is greater than the size of the population. So about 30% more mobile phone connections than, than there are people. This is something that we're seeing in many areas of the world, um, but it's, it's a growing trend as well in, in Europe. The second one that I want to point out is a good half of those people are active on social media. And when we drill down into the bigger markets like the UK or France or Germany, you'll see that that is, is more like 80%. Um, social media is growing quite strongly. Uh, I think something like 20 million people uh, joined social media, media for the first time ever um, uh, last year. Um, these numbers that I'm showing you come really from 2019, so pre-pandemic. And uh, uh, I just want to give you a, 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 you know, an estimate uh, sort of um, not yet firm numbers, but an estimate of what's going on in 2020. Uh, internet growth really accelerated. Um, it was growing previously at about internet penetration growth, that is, was growing at something like, you know, plus 2% per annum. Uh, in 2020, it looks like it grew by about 7% across all of Europe. And the average time spent on the internet. Uh, rose considerably, something like, you know, plus 8% to about seven hours a day on average. E-commerce also had a very strong, uh, strong surge. Um, uh, estimates are anywhere for the B2C market grew by about 30%. And then just uh, as a little thing, the, the, the word Zoom is now exists in every single European language, which I think is, is a telling, a telling um, feat of how of what we all did during lockdown. Um, I want to point out as well, e-commerce in Europe is large, it's growing, and it's very mobile enabled. The big star on the screen is U the UK, which is you know sort of about twice the size of the next country, a true nation of shoppers in terms of billions of, of, of euros spent. And again, these are B2C numbers. Uh, uh, but uh, I want, what I wanted to point out, first of all, as I, as I mentioned, 2020 is something like a 30% increase in um, uh, B2C e-commerce. Um, but I also wanted to mention that there's a lot of local players as well as the big guys. I mean, the big global players that we all know, you know, the Amazons, uh, the Alibabas, eBay, they're all in all of these markets as well. But there are some very, very large global player, uh, regional players as well, which is worth thinking about if you are having a, a, an e-commerce strategy um, on these markets. Then, if you looked in terms of the of, of across Europe, uh, I, again, this slide is a lot of information on it. I'm sorry, but you'll you'll you can see that the average in Europe is about 60% um, with with places like sort of you know France and and and, and things like that up at 70% and very much led by the Nordics. All the Nordic countries leading the leading the posse, you know, above 80% penetration rate for e-commerce um, for that. So just to, to give you them some, some of those numbers. Um, the, I guess the last thing I wanted to say in terms of the introduction of what I'm talking about now, all the, the from, from now on, I'm gonna be really focusing on, I'm gonna call Europe equivalent to the EU plus the UK. Um, uh, in particular, the EU. So I'm no longer going to be talking about sort of the you know Turkey and places like that. Um, what we're talking about now really is Central Europe, um, uh, you know, the core of Europe, the EU plus the UK plus the Nordic countries uh, as well. And that is, you know, if you look just the EU, 27 countries, um, uh, 80, you know, 86 percent internet penetration rate. I think that's the the key that I wanted to, to bring out there, and something like 311 million e-shoppers. So this is a very very plugged in, um, internet responsive, um, but also internet competitive place. It's a very you know it's a mature market in that sense. Now let's dive down into the three major European markets. I want to start out with talking about Germany. And uh, so Germany, you know, I think there's a couple of things that I want to point out and highlight. If you're looking at Germany from an internet part, point of view, the first thing I want to say is obviously it's got the single largest population in Europe, with 83 million. So that's number one in, in, in Europe. Um, uh, the second thing I want to find out, obviously, is it's, it's number four in terms of GDP in the world. 
and obviously, as we all know, a real a real export uh, powerhouse. You know, exports it's number three in the world. And if we look at 2020, um, you know, something like something like a 1.5 trillion dollars worth of exports alone in uh, in in from Germany. That's about a third of its GDP. But it's worth pointing out that um, imports are also not far behind. If you looked at you know, the level for imports, you'd have something like perhaps number four in the world. It's about 1.2 trillion imports, 1.5 trillion exports. So it's a big export powerhouse, but it's also a major, major importer. So worth, worth thinking about. The point about the lender system, all these different states within these, these what are called lender, the states within, within Germany, means that it is a, a very um, decentralized regional place with a lot of regionality on it. In terms of the online environment, a couple of big things I want to point out. Obviously, you've got the numbers there on the slide, you know, 84 million people, 100, you know, 111 million phone connections, 93% um, uh, of the population on the internet, 45% uh, uh, of the population uh, are using social media. So the level of social media use is a little bit lower, but it's very intense. It's, it's, it's a very specific type of social media in, in Germany. Um, but I want also to point out, while we talked about Germany as being the largest population, a German website is more, can, 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 can actually reach out to a greater level of just pure Germany. I mean, obviously, if you want to have a German website that just focuses on one city, you can do that. If you just have a German website, you're actually touching more like about 100 million people with one website. So that's worth bearing in mind. So it's not just Germany. You know, a lot of the German speakers in, in Austria, um, in, in, in Hungary, in the Czech Republic will also look at German websites when they're, when they're going online uh, and looking for information on that. Um, uh, Germany, we talked about social media. Um, the, all the usual suspects are there, you know, WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. It is growing, but the Germans have been slow to adopt social media. They've been quite reticent in some parts. You'll see that Twitter, for example, is quite low down. It's 22%. Um, uh, the Germans find Twitter sort of uh, frivolous. Uh, um, uh, here's a stat for you. There is only one German politician with a Twitter account, and it's not Angela Merkel. <laughs> Um, so, you know, Twitter is not seen as something sort of, you know, high up there, it seems, but they're, they are engaging more with, you know, the, 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 as I said, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, um, uh, they watch a lot of YouTube. They are very discreet on social media, and when you're looking at online marketing, they can be quite sort of standoffish. They very much dislike sharing any personal information, but beware because just because they're 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 not always sharing with you suddenly they will engage and they will leave re reviews they will they will read it very carefully they will react to it if you ask them something directly they will respond it's uh it's 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 um they will leave reviews for example whether they like it or not you know can be good reviews can be bad so beware on that and then, of course, the online compliance, and I'll talk about that separately, but uh, Germany is absolutely the absolute pinnacle of worldwide digital compliance. Um, in terms of the best websites in Germany, the best websites in Germany are in German. It is a competitive market. You know, if you're, if you're talking about sort of 100 million people, it, it, it is big enough that uh, you need to have a good German website in order to compete against all your competitors in that environment. You won't get away with something shoddy um, or, or just using your Canadian website. You really have to actually have engagement with a German website for that. Uh, finding keywords and using the right keywords is very, very important. Remember I said there is regional differences and indeed there can be regional differences with the keywords as well. Um, there's a big difference, for example, in keywords between like Austria and the north of Germany. There's, there's, you know, so, so make sure you have the right keywords. It's more important, there's more variance in German than in, in Spanish, Spanish, or in French, French. Um, I mentioned the compliance thing. If you are not fully online compliant, you know, with, with SSL certificates, with privacy policy, with the right cookie policy, there's something called Impressum. Uh, that, uh, uh, you know, you, you will find the Germans simply um, turn off immediately. They're very aware of that. 
and then they like a lot of content. This is not a, like a light little easy touch. They go through and they read the content and then they ask for more and they'll download the PDFs and they want to see it all. They want all the information. Um, I put a, uh, uh, um, just a little thing there, just a little um, in brackets. Um, Germans love to put words together. They, they compound words. And uh, I put a, an example there at the bottom of this slide. Um, so sometimes your, that, that, that habit can actually disturb your design and your site, site, you know, your site map and your navigation bar. There are things to do about that, but anyway, it's, it, it can be, a, it can be a, a, a designer challenge on that. Let's talk now about the UK. UK um, is the third largest population in, 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 the, in the EU, number three. Well, it's not in the EU anymore, so in, in Europe, let's say. Um, but it's very much divided between these four countries, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England. And there's a lot of regional differences between that and different challenges with that. Obviously, England is the, 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 the powerhouse. That's 70% of the GDP, 80% um, of the population. Um, I think the real, the real advantage of the English is their language. Uh, and if we just look at the number of countries who say they recognize English as an official language, there are 63. Some of those are small. I mean, you know, um, some, some islands in the Caribbean or something, but still it's, it's a very substantial number. And if you look at the number of people who say they speak English across the world, over 2 billion. Uh, so that can be very much a second or third language, but still it does give them an enormous advantage uh, for that. Um, in terms of the online environment, as I said, about 68 million people, 100, you know, the, the mobile phones are about the same. 96% of them are online. So very high penetration rate of the internet. And they are very plugged in on that as well. And again, the active social media users, about 66, 67%. I mentioned earlier that they are the e-commerce king of Europe. They're about number three or four in the world, in fact. Um, you know, uh, the, the Brits seem to love going shopping. Um, uh, they very much on their mobile phones as well, um, uh, on, uh, but also the computer. And they, 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 they search regularly, frequently. It's a very competitive e-commerce, a very vibrant e-commerce um, space. Now turning quickly to France, uh, I think I want to point out most of all, France is Europe's largest country. And that has implications for how you do business. Logistics, for example, uh, you know, can be if you're, if you're from Marseille to Calais, it's quite a distance. Um, uh, obviously, uh, a large GDP, a uh, big population. Um, it's so dominated by Paris, however. Um, the Paris region, the greater Paris region, is Europe's or the EU's most populous region and one of the highest GDP areas in the world. In terms of internet, it is, and, 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 and business wise, it's a real springboard for business into North Africa, West Africa, and the whole Mediterranean basin. So we're thinking of that as well. And we frequently do websites in French for French companies, or for, 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 for Canadian companies in French, and we're getting traction out of, out of Africa as well. So it's interesting for that. On the online side, um, uh, you know, 65 million people, 90% of them are on, on, on the internet. 60% uh, are on social media and they, they are active there um, in terms of e-commerce activity as well. They, they, they are growing, very much growing, and that had a big impact, um, impact in, in 2020, uh, certainly a 30 to even a 40% growth um, of e-commerce. Great French websites are in French, without a doubt. <laughs> Not just because of national chauvinism, but similar to, 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 to Germany, it is a large competitive market. You won't get away with something that's under par. That's not best practice. Um, there's just too much competition there. Um, they love YouTube. Um, uh, it's, one of, it's a big YouTube market, uh, and they react well to it. If, even if you have your YouTube in English, in Canadian English, that's fine. Uh, it'll get watched. Um, but they do like to see French references. They are cautious about buying or interacting with non-French unless they see, oh yes, they, they do do business in France. This, so they're, they're, they're worried about engaging unless they see that they are doing business in France. And they want to have strong social media impact on that as well. They, 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 they like their social media. 
Right, so let's look for then at um, some of these European websites and what do they look like? And I guess the first question to ask is why can't I just use my .ca? I might even have a .ca which is in French. Why can't I just use my .ca? Um, and many of you have been on these webinars, you'll know this slide, you'll know the answer to that, I'm hoping as well. It's because search engines are localized. And if you're in France, Google might not think that your, that your Canadian French website is relevant for someone sitting in France. You might get some traction, but it's going to be um, by luck rather than by design. Um, so, so you know, Google France is Google.fr. Um, uh, Google Spain, yes, you know, Google.yes. So, to use your Canadian website, just 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 you know, won't cut it. And here's an example that I've, that that many of you will know already uh, many times, especially when my dog does bark during these webinars. If if you're sitting in the UK, you go to Google.co.uk and you put squeakless dog toys, and you're going to get companies that are relevant for you sitting where you are in the UK. And if you're sitting in the US, for example, a colleague of mine in Michigan, and he writes squeakless dog toys, and he gets things that are relevant for him where he is there. So this is same search engine as Google, same words, squeakless dog toys. And because Google knows where you are and how you're acting in the internet, it'll design different responses for you. One neat little way of knowing whether your website is localized or whether it's doing its job, which is you know getting involved in that region, in that country, is to look and see where people are coming from. So this is a snapshot of, a, of, a, of, an, of an analysis of a website we built for a company who wanted an Australian website. So it's an Australian website, it's in English, and we said we want this website to be highly relevant for Australia. And the proof that it's working is if you look at who's coming to that website and how long they're staying as well. So Google believes that 90% of this website is totally relevant only for Australia. And if you include New Zealand, it's 95%. So this is a highly specific website for that country and it functions in that country. Um, on the right, what's quite interesting is that you can also see where they're coming just by, by city, by country, by, by region. And even by neighborhood within cities, if you if you really want to go and drill down for that. And just as a reminder, what do we mean by localized websites? We mean that they are customer centric, that they are buyer persona centric, so that there's lots of different ways that you make a website relevant for someone. Here are ten the ten criteria for doing that: domain names, regulatory requirements, where you're hosting, all of those. Uh, uh, impact how Google sees you as relevant for your market so that your Canadian, even if you have a French Canadian website, is not going to be seen as highly relevant for the French prospective buyer that you're targeting. So um, let's look at, I'm not going to go through all of them, I just want to go through one or two. And the first I think is, is just domain names. What do I mean by domain names? You know, that's, that's your name, you know, CanadianCompany.ca. Um, so this is a, um, a, a UK company, and they're called WDM, and WDM.co.uk, that's their UK website. And Google knows that .co.uk is absolutely targeting just narrowly uh, the, the UK market. Um, .fr is for France. And again, you're signaling to, to Google, they say, okay, Google algorithm goes, right, that one is for France. Tick and I'll push it towards France. Um, uh, you know, Google.de, that's for Germany. Uh, and again, Google, okay, that's a German website. Uh, that website is for Germany. You know, sort of, you know, put into that box. To take, there is a, another solution you can have, which is a .eu, which is a region. That's for the, all of the EU. It excludes the UK. But some, some clients also say, well, I don't know if I really want the Netherlands of Germany or France. And, and you know, I'm happy to take a slightly longer term view to build out awareness, sort of more a shotgun approach rather than a laser approach. So I'll take a .eu, so Canadian company .eu. And that tells Google that you're relevant for all of the EU. 
and you can choose whatever language you want to put your in this case Ansel chose to, to write their their websites in, in, in English because they found that that was the best language across the EU for what they were selling they're mainly talking to their distributors so that's the, another option you can have um, so the the, re, the the country code the top level country code or a regional code for all of the EU um, uh, I, I, I do want to mention this thing also about compliance. Online compliance is an absolute must-have, non-negotiable in Europe. Um, this is the GDPR, um, uh, which came into force in uh, May 20, um, sorry, 2018, um, and it regulates how and what you do with uh, with data. That's it obliges you to have cookie policies, privacy policies, something called Impressum in Germany, and there's. Uh, you know that is that is absolutely uh, non-negotiable. It's it's on the on the flip side. If you look at it a positive way, it is one set of rules for all of the EU. So that's not bad. Twenty-seven countries, one set of rules. Uh, it's also, in a sense, the right thing to do. It's it is it is it is, and it's a it is a, a wave that's coming across all countries. Uh, Canada is actually you know well on the road. Uh, with its uh, C spams and, and and other regulatory requirements of the online side, um, the big thing for a Canadian company: can I transfer data outside the EU? No, only if you are GDPR compliant. That includes your distributors. If you have a distributor in Europe and he's sending you information, uh, that's actually prohibited. You have to have a GDPR compliant website to do that. Um, obviously. Any website we build is GDPR compliant, and it's not that hard. One shouldn't take it as a as a sort of horror, you know. Take it as a as a as a as a as a yeah a challenge, but a, a good one in the end. Um, so you know the the main things it wants to do is give EU citizens control over their personal data and rights over their personal data. Um, a couple of, I mean, these are kind of rather messy slides here, but you can see these are some footers or screenshots of footers. And you can see in the top one in blue, there is a cookies policy, a Datenschutzerklärung, uh, which is a privacy policy, and an Impressum uh, for the website. And these are deliberate. And in the bottom, you can see an example of a, of a screenshot. Uh, you you have to actively opt in. You can't just say, if you continue, you accept. And you have to say, do you accept with this? Yes or no. So it has to be an active opt-in for that. And the um, the uh, cookie policy as well has to be very clearly uh, delineated. Uh, let's talk very briefly then about some of the online marketing side. Um, there were really just a few things I wanted to highlight here on the marketing side. Um, we've done a whole other webinar just on online marketing. And uh, if you want, you can get some more information from there. But just a, a, a three main points I wanted to, to point out. The first regards keywords. Keywords are really important across your European markets. I think I mentioned this already with regards to Germany. And if you're looking at German websites, it becomes quite important if you're north or south, or if you're in fact targeting Austria, or if you're targeting sort of, you know, the uh, Hamburg region, it's quite different. And so I just want to give you an example of, of, of keywords, both in Portuguese, one is for Brazil, one's for Portugal. So if you're in if you're in um, if you're in Brazil and you're using the, the word tram for train, you are capturing 95% of the people who go on the internet. If you're if you're in Portugal and you're using the word tram, you're capturing two percent of the people who go on the internet. So you're you you really have to make sure that you got the right term on that side. Again, this is using Google in both in both cases. Uh, for them. So the second thing I wanted to point out as well is the identification of your buyer persona. Again, we, we really drilled down in this. I gave a lot of examples of this in the online marketing webinar. So go and listen to that one if you have more, more um, information. But your buyer persona and how they act in the internet, on along the internet, differs in country to country. Um, this is an example of um, of a Instagram account for for a client last year, um, uh, they they target um, art school teachers and things like that. And the UK, okay, people paint Easter eggs in the UK, but they they you know in Germany it's a really big deal. And so the reactions from these two were very very different. And the German uh, Instagram one 
got a lot of um, information and was called, you know, pixel audiences. Um, you know, we were able to really identify the, the buyer persona in this one, whereas the UK was just sort of a, a quick, <laughs> um, a quick and, and, and uh, um, easy um, 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 social media campaign. Um, but in each case, I think what's important to realize is how different the buyer personas can act um, in different European markets. And again, this is an example that I gave on the, um, uh, on the online marketing one. Uh, this is uh, comparing, for example, a, a South American um, market on, in online marketing with a UK, with a European. And in this case, for the European, we were very pleased when we got 1,205 engagements. This is pretty good for a, for the frosty Brit market who doesn't usually engage at all. So, that, but you know, the same exactly the same thing uh, blew us out of the water when we looked at Mexico. So, does that mean that the UK market doesn't what react in the same way? Doesn't doesn't perform well on online media? Um, I think you have to dig down one layer because this is this is also a vanity like in many ways. So, if you dig down one layer further, you'll see. In fact, you have to expand the analysis. Um, so the blue and the red are how many people liked it and shared it and said yippee to it and all that stuff. And that's you know very, very high in Mexico. So they engage very much. And in Europe, I mean, the UK engages a lot more than, for example, Germany. So you know they, they'll look at it on their screen, but they won't necessarily like it or send it or share it or, or, or react to it. But what's interesting is the yellow and the green bars, and that shows you the lead generation or the actual sales, because that shows you, where can I buy this? Um, or um, um, how do I use this? Um, so those are two you know, quite, quite good leads that you're getting, the, the yellows being the leads and the greens being the sales. Um, and there you'll see that the bar graphs are very sim are, are, are much more similar. In fact, in fact, the, as a percentage, of course, the UK is much stronger. In fact, the UK actually gets slightly higher even than Mexico. So that the buyer persona in the UK is engaging more at the end, or he, doesn't, he engages less, but he actually goes through more. So your buyer persona journey is quite different in different markets. And that's, I think, one of the key points to point out. Right. Um, Sort of takeaways, action points, takeaways, Q&A. Um, um, you know, these are these are condensed webinars in that sense. They're they're 35 minutes. You know, hoping to get you back at your desks within 40 minutes. But um, I hope I've given a, a, a broad brushstroke. If please do jot in some questions or or circle back to me um, at any time if you have specific questions on any markets uh, um, on that. Or, or just more mark, or more questions on the on on the three big ones that I that I addressed. Um, the first takeaway that I wanted to highlight is just basically to encourage you all to look at your online business development tools and say, are they fit for purpose in the 21st century? Do I have the right tools? And it's not just about pandemic; it's post-pandemic. You know, the, the world is online. Will they be able to find me? Will they be able to understand me? Will they be able to do business with me? Um, uh, if you have export ambitions, you might want to think about your uh, business development tools and say, how can I best reach them? And, and again, don't take this as a, as a negative or, a, or as a challenge. Take it as an opportunity. It's great to know exactly where your buyers are. Where are your leads? Where are your customers? Where are your competitors? Where are your future employees? They're all online. And you can reach them all online. That's great. Um, just a, a reminder of Europe as a whole, and this is uh, again including places like Turkey, um, a very, very plugged in place, um, a very competitive online environment where your online tools have to be spot on. You've got to have great websites for Europe to engage with Europeans because it's a crowded, um, sophisticated, developed market. Uh, but if you get it right, they react very well to it, and you can you can have a great business with those markets. Um, those markets. Um, then just to remind you that there's a lot of resources available to Atlantic Canadian companies, from um, you know a, 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 you know a, a deep downloads you can have free free downloads on on these individual markets, on the the webinars that we've been talking about. 
um, uh, you know, all of us, um, I think next week we have online in the USA as well, I think, which is an interesting one for many Canadians. Um, so that's on, on our side, but all of your provinces have organizations and um, uh, people to help you with in, 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 in across, you know, whichever, whichever um, uh, province you're in. So, you know, uh, here's some, some of the names, uh, you know, if you're, you know, if you're in PEI and you want to reach out to Cara, um, if you're if you're in Newfoundland, then you know talk to Kevin, um, uh, or 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 reach out indeed to to Aaron if you if you need to. So you know do there's a lot of resources for you. Uh, reach out and take advantage of them. Um, for that. And then in terms of just the next steps, as I said, just just have a look and, and check out the webinars. Listen to some of them, see if they are interest for you. If they are, maybe share them with the colleagues. Get your teams together and figure out if your online tools are where they should be for the 21st century. Um, do get in touch. If we can be of any help, we're very happy to. Um, uh, and if you want more information about any of these markets, let us know. We're always here to help. And I know that Aaron is also always there to help as well. Um, and the and the provincial government heads too. Right. Um, that was that was the online in Europe speed edition. Thank you all so much for for attending. There's one I'll answer one question about domain names. Uh, yes, we can help you get domain names. Most countries do not have restrictions for them. Um, you know, for most countries, you're totally able to buy them. For example, in the UK, uh, there's no restriction to buying a, a domain name in the UK. Um, and .eu, um, I think there is a restriction, but again, we can help you with those in particular. Okay, great. Thank you all very, very much. Have a great rest of day, and I hope to see you online, offline, and um, and uh, um, happy, happy trading. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>